Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real Fans Real Talk.com, where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real Fans Real Talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the art. Even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Hello everyone, welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk I'm Mark the Statman Skevich We got a great show lined up for you tonight We're looking fresh with our Good Money by Ty Apparel so we're going to have the designer and founder of the company a little later on on the program. A lot going on in the world of sports, March Madness, in full effect. NHL and NBA playoffs right around the corner. A uh, lot to talk about on tonight's episode. But before we get into all that, let me introduce my co-host, which I'm grateful to have, just like his t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, sweatshirt, I should say, the one and only Trip Young, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on, man? Oh man, it, it's been a really good week. Oh man, it, it's good, and I'm, I'm glad. You know, the guest that we have today, and I'm this is a, a really good friend of mine. So I'm glad that we finally were able to get him on the show. And if you notice, you know, he's been the one that's that's keeping me fresh the past couple of weeks. But not only myself, if, you, if you're looking on the gram, if you're on Facebook, on any kind of social media, I'm sure you're seeing these Grateful shirts. You might see the Good Money shirt. You might see the Now or Never shirts. I know uh, I just saw Cortez had one on in his music video, his new video. So, you know, they they, they out there. They, they moving units. So I was glad I could get mine before everybody else got theirs. And uh, and, that, and that's that's how we're going we gonna to do it this week. Shout out to uh, Ladybug, too. She's not with us this week. She's actually in Florida. Running her toes through the sand on the beach, but in, in her honor, I threw on the pregame hat tonight, especially since the blue went with the blue in the in the sweatshirt. So uh, shout out to Lady Boy. We'll see you next week when you uh, get back into the city. But uh, Stat Man, let's jump into these sports, man. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the Now or Never shirt was perfect theme song for uh, when mm -hmm. I was starting in the Golden Gloves. So shout out to Ty for getting that ready for the Golden Gloves. Definitely what I've been saying throughout the whole time before I started with the tournament. Uh, but moving along into the sports, we're actually uh, looking forward to a huge matchup that we're going to see in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see it three times in the next few <laughs> weeks. That is the two hottest teams in sports right now, mm -hmm. the Golden State Warriors and the San Antonio Spurs. They matched up once before. In Golden State, and uh, Golden State got the best of that matchup. Tim Duncan did not play, uh, but this time uh, it will be uh, this Saturday night. It will be in San Antonio where the Warriors have not won in almost 20 years. 1997 was the last time the Golden State Warriors went into <laughs> San Antonio. There, there's your stat, ladies and gentlemen. That, that's Nine, a long time. 1990s. That was before Tim Duncan was even playing with the Spurs. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, the David that's, Robinson area. Still still a very crazy. talented team then. That's, yeah. that's crazy. You though. figure that, like, you know, it would have happened before then, especially. But you know what? The Spurs have been a really good team for a really long time, and Golden State really hasn't been this dominant and until, up until like until, last season, so yeah, I can kind of see that. I mean, they had that one good year when uh, with Baron Davis when they beat the Mavericks in the first round, but they weren't a great team back then. They were, you know, they were AFC coming in, or you know. But other than that, I can understand why. But we do come to this clash of the Titans, and who are you taking? I mean, I I gotta go with the Warriors. I mean, the they're, they're the hotter team. Uh, I mean, it's it, it could. Uh, 
it's really kind of 50-50 with me. I could see Coach Popovich playing the mind games, not playing Tim Duncan the first game. So he could say, oh, well, we lost, but I didn't play Tim Duncan because he was resting. So he does that a little bit on purpose, too. If everybody's healthy and everybody's playing in all these ma- in these matchups, I think that um, I think that the the Warriors will take two out of the next three games. The Spurs will win one at home. And uh, the uh, Warriors will win the uh, the other away game in San Antonio. So, What's your pick in Golden State to win this game in San Antonio? On this Saturday? Whew, wow. I, I think so, actually. <laughs> I honestly think so because I think... You know the you know Steph Curry knows uh, the the stat nineteen ninety seven and it's you know something that's probably brought to his attention and I think they're going to want to end that and go into San Antonio and kind of send the message that they're you know they're trying to build their own dynasty and uh, the dynasty kind of changing a little bit so I do think that it is going to be Golden State uh, our fan mail question to be specific uh, Derek from uh, Austin Texas wrote in. Who do you guys think will lose at home first, the Spurs or the Warriors? Both teams not losing at home. Um, the Warriors having the record for all-time home games, home game winning streak dating back into last season. But I, you know, I mean, my answer is clear there. I think the Warriors are going to win this Saturday in San Antonio. So I think the Spurs are going to lose first. Um, I'm going against you on both of those. I'm going with San Antonio at home. I mean, they've both been just as good at home. San Antonio hasn't lost at home uh, going back to uh, last season as well. So I'm, I, I, and I and I like them. There. I mean, they're both hot right now, but I just think I, I got to go with the home team, Popovich. He, you know, he's been his his last couple of months. His whole mindset has been on beating the Golden State Warriors. And not that I think that they'll beat them the next three games that they play each other in the regular season, but I just think at home in San Antonio, that building is going to be on fire on Saturday. And I'm, I'm going with the Spurs. They got Ginobili back. You know, uh, about a week or two ago, Gin- Ginobili came back. The team is looking good right now. They're healthy. Now, uh, as far as who will lose at home first, I still... I'm going with the Golden State Warriors on that one too, and the reason why I say I picked the Golden State Warriors is because Golden State has a tendency to lose to those teams that they shouldn't lose to, and I think it could be one of those matches where we saw with the Bucks early in the season. But we those saw are all the, road games, and the, I think it's the, because the, they're road the games that they lost. Yeah, but that's the thing. We don't like the Spurs. When the Spurs lose, they're losing to the to the top teams in the in the league. They they're a very good veteran team, and they don't let that. They don't play down to their competition. They're playing that same Spurs basketball against every opponent. So for that reason, I'm picking Golden State to lose at home first. I mean, we could see them both go the entire season. Yeah, I mean, and not and, that's and not very lose, likely. I wouldn't be at too home. shocked yeah, with exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. But if we got to pick one, I'm just go. I'm gonna go Golden State just because of that. Because I know that they do have a tendency to lose to those lower level teams. Yeah, I mean, well, the Knicks weren't able to end the home game streak. I, I knew you'd have been happy if that happened. But if that would have happened, it would have been kind of like a, yeah. a, a minor victory, like I said last year, if they beat LeBron's homecoming game. I'll, I'll be. I don't care if they lose every other game the rest of the season, and they lost almost every game the rest yeah. of the season, but. That would have been a hell of a victory if they would have ended Golden State's uh, <laughs> winning streak. But uh, both the Rangers and the uh, Knicks were on the West Coast, so both late games. I was watching both of them at the same time. The uh, Rangers managed to uh, get a victory. Uh, it's We had Kevin Klein score two goals, uh, one in the second, one in the third, which was the game-winning goal. Uh, the only two goals winning two games to one, uh, two to one. And uh, he's never scored two goals in a game in his entire career, so it was uh, definitely a good night for him. Rangers are now in second place in the Eastern Conference. So, ask you a question: When do you think, or if there will ever come a time that the Rangers and the Knicks play well at the same time, and they're both actually championship contenders? Well, it happened in 1994. I remember that very so clearly. So before the last time Golden State beat the Spurs at home, that was the last time that, that happened. No, I mean, well, I mean, they were both playoff teams before, you know, since 1994. But not but, at the same time, though. No, playoff teams, but not re- legit contenders okay. like like right. in 1994. <laughs> so, I mean. So that was the last, last 
I mean, the last time that it comes to mind, I mean, they both made, okay. they both made it to the finals. Of, right. of, of I just, dude, I just want to know. I'm just asking. I just want to check the doubles on that. See, you know, uh, listen. I just want to know. This is the Knicks, man, and sometimes I, I want to give them encouragement, you know, with things. And like maybe the the fact that the Rangers are playing well that might encourage the Knicks. I mean, not this season because it's pretty much over for yeah. this season. I know you want to see them play the Cavs in the first round, and maybe, but that didn't happen. So we got to. Once again, we're shooting for next season with the Knicks, right? I mean, that's kind of been the story for a while. Oh, okay, now. all right. And we'll get into the Phil Jackson <laughs> stuff in a minute, but want to shout out my good luck charm who was with me uh, watching the game. I say my good luck charm because the Rangers kind of always win. There was a little bit of a... She was wearing my Rangers hat and going to the bathroom. She took it off, and then Anaheim scored. I said, "You got to, you got to keep the hat on. Like it's your fault." Then the next time she went to the bathroom, she kept the hat on, and the Rangers scored. And then the Rangers scored again. So she was good there luck go. for me, good luck for Kevin Klein, and good luck for the Rangers. As long as the shout out to winning, Alina, man. the good luck charm. As long, so. as long as the Rangers are winning, that's that's the. Best part I mean, this whole any, any way they could win. So, and Anaheim is a good it. team. They're up there in the Western Conference, too. So mm -hmm. it was a big matchup on the road in Anaheim, West Coast trip, beating one of the top teams in the West. They're definitely uh, looking forward to the playoff run with the Rangers and, of course, the NBA playoffs at the same time. Looking forward to uh, you know an exciting next couple of months in both the NBA and NHL. And, of course, Ma March Madness is out there and all of you have your brackets out there happy saint patty's day to all of you out there we're watching uh you know march madness and enjoying some of the saint patrick's day festivities so a lot, lot going on in the world of sports definitely uh I, I, you know i don't i said i don't know if i said it. i did have a, a little beer earlier for saint patrick's day I oh, that's it. Why, we're on the air now what do you do <laughs> I wasn't on the air. Was I wasn't it a green on the air. one? I had to celebrate. It was a celebration. It was green. It was green. So oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. It's, you know, it's for the, for the festivities and for the folks. And then, you know, I had a lot of people, they had to kiss me. I'm Irish, you know, shirts and whatnot. So I wanted to be a part of the festivities. So I just said, hey, you know, why not? It's, it's today. It's er today only. Everybody's <laughs> Irish on St. Paddy's Day. Exactly. We would normally have the green on, but we got to support our guests who will be coming on in a short time. Mm -hmm. uh, Good Money by Taya is the label. Uh, there's the logo there. We, we got the shirts on. We'll have the founder on shortly. But the Phil Jackson thing, since since I touched on it a little bit, mm -hmm. he's said he's willing to coach half the games next year, meaning just the home games, because he doesn't want to travel. Travel. That's one of the reasons why he retired in the first place. Is he's old. He's in his seventies. The traveling and everything it just takes its toll on you. And he, you know, he he likes living in New York. Obviously, he played in New York. Won championships uh, with the two, the only two championship Knicks teams. Wants to bring the title back to New York. A long time ago. I, and a long time ago, I said <laughs> Phil would come back to New York and he would coach New York. But he should have done this from the beginning yeah. and instead of now. Because, you know, if you want to do that in the beginning and Coach Fisher was kind of like your, you know, uh, you're, you're kind of molding him in the process or something, then that's one thing. Now yeah. there's, you know... Other talks of who's going to coach next year, uh, if, even though he he seems comfortable now with w what he's got. But what do you think of the whole uh, scenario? I, I just think that he needs to fall back, focus on being a GM, go out there, and either bring in Tom Thibodeau or bring in the guy I wanted from the beginning, Mark Jackson, who I thought would have been perfect, being a New York guy, play for for the Knicks to come back and take over as the coach. I, I mean, all that. Who first of all, who wants to say I'm only the coach on the road? Like, what coach is gonna really want to sign? What I say, which of the elite coaches is gonna want to come on for that? I so mean, yeah, I mean, if that, it's if it's thing. Phil Jackson, you kind of somewhat respect it. Luke Walton was one of the yeah, names that w was thrown out there because you saw the job he did with the Warriors when Steve Kerr was out and he played anybody in LA. Anybody could have did that job with the Warriors. I mean, <laughs> like yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just throw Luke Walton as he's now he's a top coach because he started off the season hot with the uh, the best team in basketball, maybe even one of the best teams in the history of the NBA. I'm not gonna give him too much credit for that, but I guess he is somebody that would come in and say, well, okay, I'll coach the road games and, and let you take all of the all of the home games. And, I mean, Phil Jackson as a coach even if it is just the home games and kind of, you know, watching the game and coaching via, via, um, you know, communication by, by phone, radio, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's something that might track, attract the free agents. So like people want to play for Phil Jackson. So, yeah. you know, 
if you have um, if you have Luke Walton as the head coach, is that going to attract someone well, with the caliber say, of Ke- get, Kevin Durant? Go out and get Tom Thibodeau or Mark Jackson because then players would come from one of those two guys because they're both proven coaches, two of the top coaches, you know, in in basketball. So I would say go there. I'm just not with the I'm going to take the home games <laughs> and then you take the road games. Like I mean, because then I mean, there's still a level of of of, of respect. Okay, like that you're gonna have fulfill obviously at home, and is is it, are you gonna be able to bring in somebody where the players are gonna have that same kind of respect on the road one, and then the chemistry that you have to have as far as with the team and the coach now on the road as opposed to when you're at home. So I would rather them just get one good coach and let that be the end of it. And there's coaches out there that will come to the Knicks and will you know work under under Phil Jackson. And, and I mean at the end of the day, I mean this is I mean obviously they're a losing organization, but the Knicks organization is it. one of the cool. greatest. I mean, yeah, I did have to throw that in there. But it is the Knicks organization. It is one of the greatest basketball organizations in the history of the sport. So, this is, I mean, this is not like, you know, you, you, you're going like to Like the Cavaliers to, to, to was the, never to, won to at anything ever. Or anything anything like that. Like, this is a, t- a, a story franchise. I mean, it's the mecca of I basketball. I to throw that in. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, as long as LeBron got, got his rings, I'm, I'm cool with that, so. He's he's got one more recently than the Knicks though, right? Or two or yeah, he's definitely got. One. Okay, but with that being said, though, we do have a guest that's going to be joining us on the set, and uh, he did allow us to come behind the scenes, took us to the warehouse where they where they make all the clothes at. I mean, they got a lot of stuff there. They got they got hoodies, they got sweatshirts, they got sweatsuits, they got hats, they got scullies. They got first of all the best thing, which was what I liked the most, and I'm gonna have to get get one for my for my little nephew. They got the the onesies for the babies. It's, I mean, this is like this is crazy, man. So I, this is why you know I I, I love this uh, clothing line. But uh, we're gonna let you guys check out a, a, a little bit of that work and a little bit of 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 Ty letting us come through while he's at work. You know, so and then and then when we come back, he's gonna be joining us at our job. We're gonna right. do it like that. So what's up? This is Tom McCoy, creator, founder of Grateful Opportunities Open Doors. We are here in the Bronx, producing right now, and T S I A. What we call you? T shirt guy, right? The T shirt guy studio. <laughs> that Thanks works.
live on Real Fans Real Talk. Mark the Statman Skevich alongside Trip Young and our special guest, Tymel McCoy, founder of Good Money by Ty. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Right, First and foremost, thank you guys. I appreciate this. This is a grateful opportunity. As my brand would say, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, you been keeping, you I feel been keeping like I made it. Stuff, so you I feel like I made it. <laughs> I mean, once you get on Real Fans Real Talk, the career just skyrockets exactly. from there. I, so, it. I mean, we've had that historically happen with a lot of our guests. So, I mean, we're just talking about with Cortez last week. I mean, he was already well known, but his right. career just boom. Yeah. I, see, I, see, I see, I see, I see. That's it. I see, that's man. And shout out to Cortez as well, man. I, I got a chance to meet him about a week or two ago, and he's just been popping up in my clothes, and I appreciate that, man. Shout out to you, Cortez. That's, I appreciate it. That's the brand right there. Listen, when you, when you got a good brand, you got good products, then, right. you know, people don't mind getting it, man, and wearing it. You, <laughs> see, you see what it is, man, and, 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 I've, and I've noticed that everyone that I've seen that has seen the clothes, right. they really like the clothes because I think it's... it's it's, it's something. It's, it's it's just the impact that you have on right. it's, it's it's real, and I think like you really go hard with the brand. I mean everything, and I told you this before. Even with like, I mean, if you guys saw the bags in the in the video, right, like, right, right. That's like, who, I mean, who's doing that outside? I mean, Bloomingdale's got the big I mean, brown bag. I mean, that's but that's you, that's you where it's your, from. I mean, that 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 niche, that yeah. whole vintage vibe of us young yes. kids going shopping back in the day exactly. and just wanting the Bloomingdale's bag. So I was like, ugh. And How it, can I dope. bring back that nostalgic feeling? So I'll got the put a bag. Bags, you got the good money. Put my logo on, on it. it. Then you throw on the clothes, man. You, and you got all right. First of all, tell us um, as far as your pieces go. Right. What you have for the for the people at home? Um, just about everything. Just about everything I can possibly make from t-shirts. I started with t-shirts. We got um hoodies, crew necks. We have polo shirts. We have. Dresses for for women. We have leggings. We have crop tops. We have everything. We got the kids. Take care of the kids. We got toddlers, onesies, infant onesies. We have the t-shirts with the bowls for the um, females. We have just about everything. So I try to cover everything, like I'm, a big brand, like Gap. Yeah, and I told you, I'm, also, I'm impressed by just by the baby Gap. <laughs> I mean. I can't. That's different because because uh, most you know uh, new designers I don't really see people doing baby clothes. Oh. I see everybody you know a lot of people that that start clothing lines they got the shirts and might have hats, but I don't see nobody doing baby. Well, actually, baby clothes. it started it started off as like I would want my consumers to like have something for their kids if they yeah. didn't know. So I would just surprise them. If uh, a female that had a, a son that was about 12 months mm -hmm. bought a T-shirt for me, I would just throw a little onesie in a bag yeah. and just surprise it, and out of nowhere, it, it became a thing. So I was like, you know what? I could do that with every 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 purchase. Mm -hmm. I could just throw a onesie in. I know they have a niece or a nephew that's around yeah. that age, or a baby shower is always coming yeah, up. Yeah. Some, so I made that. The use out of them. I made it that 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 go. So. Now, where does the Good Money brand come from? Um. Well. Uh, it originated in 2005. I, I started a, a, a little t-shirt, little thing in my neighborhood, you know. Wanted to be a little different from all the other brands that was out, streetwear brands, all the luxury brands was big around that time and um, from around 2002 to 2006 with the Prada, the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci. Yeah. And, you know, everybody was spending a lot of money on things, so I figured if I can make something cool within my neighborhood, yeah. Keep my friends from spending all that money with those brands. I can make something happen, and it started with me personally, personalizing stuff. Yeah. So I started with making myself a tea, and then throughout time, the neighborhood caught on. Ty, you make the T-shirt. Can I have one myself? And then I realized I had something. And then that's now we now we didn't now we didn't come to I mean, right now where we we at right it's, now. It's been it's been some work. It's been about um. Going on 10 years, but I wouldn't say it was a lot of hard work within that time. I took breaks within that time, mm -hmm. but uh, about two years ago, I lost um, my best friend. Um, his name is um, Danny H. D. A. Seuss, and I was at a point where I wanted to stop, you know, wanted to stop, and yeah. he was the one, like, Ty, like, what I'm going to wear if you stop making clothes? Mm -hmm. 
And when he passed, I, I, I was like, the mission is to make this happen. Yep. He, he wanted this to go. And ever since he passed Rest away, peace. I've been going knee deep. And now we here. It's been two years I've been going hard every day, nonstop. Grateful good. Grateful good. Grateful opportunities open doors. And I feel like the doors are starting to open. They, they definitely are, cause like I said, if, if you if you check on Instagram, if you check on on Facebook, you put that hashtag in, they <laughs> are definitely wearing the clothes. Right. And now, and like I said, I, I'm I'm seeing them in music videos now. That sweater though, that he has on, that's the wave right there. Now we're never. See, step step there you go. <laughs> Now we're never. Over there, step this is a staple. Yeah. Grateful. I know when people see you with it, they yeah. that's a nice sweater. And that's that's what I love about my brand the most. People would come up to me, or people, my friends would call me, uh, someone that bought a sweater, like, Todd, like, yeah. a 65-year-old lady came up to me and complimented me on my sweater. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, also like a positive message, too, like design, grateful, design, not, you know, positive. it's a lot of the nonsense that's out there, right. the negativity, so it's something... Positive, so that's why a 65 year old lady would appreciate and, and that. That and at the strikes same time, me. A 25 year old guy or whatever could appreciate it. Strikes it, too. Me. Like, it strikes me because yeah. it's like a, it's just a regular sweater, but. Listen, my parents, my parents love it. They, they see, do? They see the clothes and they like, yo, I, I want it. one of those. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, you know, like, I appreciate they, that. because cause like, like Statman said, like, it is, there's something in the message and I think that's right. what gravitates people to the clothing, that grateful, that, that, that now or, or never. Right. You know, you don't those see that things. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's I appreciate positive. that. And it's, it's encouraging and that's what, and that's what we, we need more of. We need that right. encouraging. You know, we need everything, everybody got a t-shirt out with a little stupid saying or, or, or emoji. G. Yeah, but something that's positive and it looks good right. and it feels good when when you wear it. Like that's I think that's what sets your brain right, apart, right, right. and I think that's why you're gonna continue to grow the way you are because of. Thank you, that. thank you. I appreciate that. And that's I why appreciate I listen. that. That's why I listen. That's why I don't mind. I think you know I throw my great sweatshirt. <laughs> and that's new too. I I just See? um released a set of um sweatshirts on the website um Wednesday night um. New colorways to the grateful. I have royal blue, red. I have the the bright pink for the females, the purple. I have a lot of colors coming soon, and um, I'm just working on my spring line as of right now. So, so for all you Jordan sneakerheads out there, <laughs> you know what that means. That yeah. means you got a sweatshirt, you can get a hat, a, a tee, or polo for any Jordan, any pair of Jordans that you want. Definitely, I already spoke to Tom about, about the next pair I'm gonna get, so he. Yeah, we're gonna set it up. We're gonna set it up. Got right. me in mind, so it's definitely gonna gonna be a good look. But tell them um, real quick. Tell them the website. All right, all right. If they want to go on and, and the website. Go shopping. The website is um, www.thegrateful, T-H-E. You know, a lot of people don't know how to spell grateful, right? That's I spell it wrong. <laughs> That's just true. G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L, grateful, good. G-O-O-D dot bigcartel.com. You can shop there. You can get anything you want. I'll be putting new things up. As the spring commence, and I'll just be just going hard until the wheels fall off. You can just, just see me everywhere. Expect to see me everywhere. The, um, the social media not letting there. go. Got the website oh, social, social media. media. I'm on um, Facebook. You can Facebook me, Tom L. McCoy, T-Y-E-M-E-L-L, -L -L, McCoy, M-C-K-O-Y. I'm on Twitter, Good Money Co. underscore Ty. I'm on... I'm not gonna give y'all my Snapchat. Snapchat is a little different. The Instagram, <laughs> um, Instagram, like, uh... Instagram, um, Good Money by Ty G O O D M O N E Y B Y T A H. That is a typo there on the low, on the. Uh, Got a typo there. on it. Uh, it's like, it's <laughs> so good, good instead of good. Oh, it's good. With a D G O O D. We gonna we gonna talk to them in the back about that. Yeah. that one. Get that right, I get but, that right. Uh, but y'all definitely, y'all once y'all go on the Instagram, y'all gonna see like I mean, there's so many different varieties, right. so many different color schemes. Like this, whatever you want, whatever kind of outfit you got in mind, this man got it. Make so it you, know, you better check it on the website before it's all sold out because, you know, I, I know he's doing his thing right now. And, and you know, you in the past 
for a couple a couple of couple of weeks. I know you really been moving. Uh, and you've been I linking think... up with a lot of different celebs and whatnot right. as well. Right. Getting that, getting them, getting them clothes out there. I mean, product placement. I've been working on a lot of marketing, just the business side of things. I feel like I've been putting in the work as far as my message and letting people know what the brand is about. And now it's time to start expanding and reaching out to notable. I don't like to say celebrities because I feel like we're all celebrities, but yeah. notable people who can like reach, like make you know, ex get to the masses, my reach, get my reach out there. A bigger reach. I ultimately want Oprah in a in a grateful snapback. And you know what? And the good she thing about this brand is loves that she's some, she someone <laughs> that we're would. Welcome. Be in and one of that's, these. That's shirts. my goal, and that and, and that's that's the thing but about it. You take ninety percent of your brand. To I mean, no, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's Oprah. But that's the, that's the good thing. It's it's, a, it's a something that the audience can be will get all urban, ones. but also be commercial at the same time. Right. And everybody, it doesn't matter race, nationality, can, can ex, uh, can, can love it. Where, yeah, class, wherever you at financially, whatever you can be in the in the top in the two percent or whatever. Right. You can be you know whatever. You can still wear these shirts because it's one unified message that right. we all can can build around. Exactly. So you, you gotta love that. Tell I us about the logo. It. I like it because obviously the O's are money bags and oh. it's a cool design. Does that come out when you started in 2005? Or? Yes, that was um, actually one of the first logos I did. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, um, the first, the name of the brand at first was Good Money Company. Um, it was grateful opportunities, open doors to money and, to money and companies. Mm -hmm. I, I, that was the whole niche behind things and we was going to move like that. And... Um, the first idea that I came up with was light. It was like everybody was saying light in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like, like, how? what you doing? I'm light, I'm light, I'm light. I was like, I probably can do something with this. I went home, designed something on Custom Inc. I put it out and sold out in mm -hmm. two, three weeks in my neighborhood, about 40 or 50 units. Wow. So I was like, I might have something. <laughs> I might have something. So um, about the... When I, it was the winter time around that time. So when the summertime came around, I was like, I need a logo. I need like something street weary. So I was just playing around on the computer and I found the money bags. I said, do I want to be too, you know, too streety with it? I want to yeah. keep my message clean, but I need a street wear look. Yeah. So I, I put it out and it stick. It, it stick. Did. And you know what? And, and the good thing is, is that you still have the balance, though, right. too. So you do have, because this isn't an, an urban clothing line, but you know, so with the with the good money, with the money bags, right? But at the end of the day, you still have the grateful. It's, it's, more, it's a It's also a exactly. lifestyle a lifestyle brand, level. exactly. Right. So it it, it, it works. Right. You, know, you, got, you got every every side of the spectrum covered. I just, I've just been doing homework for the since I've decided to dedicate myself. So I've just been doing homework on how mm -hmm. can I differentiate myself from all the streetwear brands that's going to come out, that's been out in yeah. the past 10 years or that's coming out in the next five years. And I feel like I've I got about two or three lanes I can go down when I decide to, street how, how, or clean. How often do you come out with a new line? A new collection or? A new, a new, yeah, a new collection, I um, Not too often. I probably do about five collections a year, but um, I drop something new every week. You know that? Yeah. Every week I drop something new. I try to keep it consistent, not overbearing or, but just new colorways, a new a new theme, a new sense with the color. I just try to do something different. Just keep people on their toes as well. I feel like it's music. Like you see yeah, how you I come out with you yeah. new mixtape every, every I week. I feel like it's music. I, I, I take that. I take that approach as well. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, it, it's, and, it, and it's working. It's working. Thanks. Because, I, like, I'm t like, and this is not, you know, because I know you, 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 you have given us clothes before to wear, right. but I'm seeing more and more people right, 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 wearing right. this. Like I said, when I when I saw it, it was, it was just funny that I saw the Cortez video pop up, yeah, and I'm like, wait a minute, is this is anything weird? What I'm the? trying to think I'm where like, I was at. I was like, what the easy? You know, is he, like, so that's, and, and that's a good thing. That, that means that the word is spreading fast. Right. And it's going it's catching like wild, wildfire. I appreciate and it. Get man. yours before Bloomingdale's picks them up. Yeah, and no, triples the price. <laughs> no, it's going down. It's going down. No. Yeah, you got you got you got to get yours early. You definitely got to get Bloomies. Yours early. 
But now, uh, <laughs> sports wise, since we're on a sports show, right. what, what's your team? So I wanted like? to ask you too. What high school you went to? Bishop Ford. I went to Bishop Ford. Oh, okay. Fernandez kicked me out. <laughs> I, I did some bad things, but. Shout got, out to Bishop he turned, he turned Ford. It he turned it around. I got the warning that. freshman year that if I do something else like that again, I'll be kicked out. I, I, I got I, 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 I was up out of there by my sophomore year. I had great times there. I played football and basketball there. Okay. So, you know, shout out to Bishop Ford, you know. This is definitely, it's definitely a Brooklyn thing. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn. You know, but you, Shout you out did, to Brooklyn you, you as well. Did turn, you did turn things around, though, and, uh, and, and we're looking at positive things now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my favorite teams, right? I don't really have a team. I'm a football guy. I'm a Giants guy. Well, I mean, that's I'm a Charles a Wade Day guy. Like, you remember Charles Wade? And, yeah, that's... Yeah. That's, that's, From back in the day, that's, that's I'm a, a Giants fan. Are you happy that's with it. the moves that the Giants made so far this the off best, season? The best offseason we probably had in about how many years? As far back as I can remember, <laughs> really. You, you know what? You, uh, you're absolutely right. This this was a really good one. I just hope we had the one of the best seasons we had. I was, I was yeah. thinking today, as the stat man, um, the Giants have won in the 80s. They've won in the, uh, the Every Super decade. Bowl in the 90s. Every they've decade. won in the 2000s. Every and decade. The 2010s. So they've won in every decade. I don't. I can't think of another team that's done that. Well, just saying. I mean, it's other. We, but we're not considered a dynasty. Think yeah, about that. We haven't won so many in a row. Yeah, but, yeah, but. But, like the Patriots, they won a lot, but they didn't win in the 80s. Yeah, at all. Well, more I mean, because a lot of most of this came at the same time. And the, the, exactly, the but I'm just custom. saying, like the Cowboys don't have, can't say that. The Steelers right. can't say right. that. I don't think there's, there's, there's not no true. other team. That's Steelers had great teams 90s. back in the days, yeah. but yeah. yeah. There's your stat of the day from the stat man. <laughs> yeah. If you want to check me on it, because I haven't like officially confirmed that's a fact. Memory. That's a fact. It's, it's, I can't think of another team that's yeah, done no, it. So. That's a fact. So I mean, that's that's a good thing. So and the Giants definitely did make a lot of, of good moves. I hope they still continue to, to, to make a couple moves. They'll have two moves. in this decade because of those free agent moves. I like, mean, yeah. let's make their it happen this, their, this year. The defense was yeah. their problem. You saw they almost beat Carolina in a shootout. Right, right. Yeah. Against, the, like, Eli Manning and the offense against that Carolina defense, <laughs> yeah. tearing it apart and almost coming out with the victory. He's if this their close. Defense, the defense was just a little bit better they would have won that game. Yeah. And they would have won a lot more games, too. But, you know, Man. the defense... It, it not only is it bad, but it also tends to collapse in the fourth quarter specifically. I was about to ask you, how many fourth quarter games we lost this year? About five or six? Uh, more, yeah, more than that. Yeah, more? More than that. Because I, we, I, ch we lost, I, I we changed lost, the channel a couple times. Yeah, like, we lost five in like the last few, like five minutes Goodness or something gracious, like that. gracious, man. So, yeah. but I you got to close out games yeah, better. I think the moves that the Giants made... This season, I'm 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 really happy. Like I said, I said last week, but I'm really happy they brought JPP back. Right, 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 they right. Got some some help at the safety position. That's solid. Secondary, They're they solid. showed up. So I, I think that this year going in, now it's just about health and being right, healthy. right, right. With this team, if the Giants can stay healthy, they'll be back in the playoffs. And I always say this. The Giants are the scariest team in the playoffs. <laughs> All the time. Because they can beat anybody All on the time. any given weekend in the playoffs. So you, you, you're going to want to want to watch out. But I, I think that, you know, they've really improved. So yeah, I'm, look, we, I, yeah, we I'm looking up. forward to it. We, we turned you know, up. I'm looking forward to, to this new season. I'm also glad the Ravens, uh, they, they made a few pickups. They got uh, Eric Weddle out there for safety. And uh, they brought Mike Wallace mm. over. I'm hoping he can kind of turn his... Uh, his That's career pick up around because he hasn't played to, to the level we played at when he was in Pittsburgh since he left Pittsburgh. So I'm, I'm hoping that he can help out the Ravens as well. So that was a good look. The Patriots got got a little bit a little bit better. They had to trade Chandler Jones, but they brought over Chris Long and they also brought over uh, Martellus Bennett, Bennett yeah. from the Brilliant. Bears. So they they're gonna. Oh, have Tom Brady likes God. having two dangerous tight ends. He had that. He's always find a way. Yeah. What? That's the yeah. Listen, Belichick. we might see another Giants Goodness gracious! Super Bowl this yeah, it's, de it's definitely they, get, they picked possible. up Bennett. They, yes, they yeah. did. and they probably are not done yet. I mean, they had to trade Chandler oh, Jones. Oh wow! Who you know probably one of the better defenders. Nah, he's a he's a wild child. I like but, him. I like him. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, bringing over Bennett, I mean, we could be Tom Brady might have another one of those MVP seasons. It was thirty eight. We'll be. Going into the season, he might have another MVP season because wow. I mean the last time he had two great tight ends, I'm so <laughs> and, happy. And, and, and I'm so Gronkowski. happy. Exactly. So now you got Gronkowski and Bennett together. 
I don't know. The Patriots could be right back in the in the thick of things. That I definitely see them. Winning I'm sick of seeing them in there, man. I'm <laughs> sick of them. Yeah, especially with the Broncos losing pieces left and right. So. Yeah, oh yeah, this like, like their whole much. team fell apart. Yeah, who? that's why it's so hard to win back to back Super Bowls. Right, like, right. You know, especially you in, NFL, in the NFL, it's yeah, different. It's probably the hardest. Because like once you win people. one, it's like the people will start. You know, leaving like right. you know, even with the Giants, you had Strahan retire. Like they got their victory, so that right. that team kind of lost some pieces, got some new pieces with Cruz the second time around. Yeah. But why is that walks, such a such a you, thing you, in the NFL and not in other you, sports? You got your ring, so you want your money now. You don't you right. know, like people will take that cut to get the ring, but once they got the ring, they want you know, the they, money. they just care about the money okay. going forward. And it's so. not it's a, it's a, the one sport where you mean you mean it's really not guaranteed. I was just about ball. to say that as well. So the, if you get that ring, it's like now the career span is a little short. Now, he said it. He said, "Listen, it's about my daughter now." Taking care of my family, you know. I love the Broncos organization. I appreciate what they did for me, but now it's it's about providing for my family long right. term. So I can understand that, you know. Um, who do you think? Because now the Broncos don't have a. I mean, they have. They got uh, your boy Dirty Sanchez over there. But <laughs> who do you think? Dirty Sanchez. Who do you think is the is the best fit out of the guys that are available right now? You got oh Kaepernick, man! You got Fitzpatrick. Uh, you got RG3. Which one of those three do you think gives the Broncos the best chance of returning I'm to the to, Super Bowl? I'm trying to think who would fit. Who would, who would fit better? Like, would they change their offense for, for Kaepernick? That's the thing. Uh, I mean, because, I mean, two out of the RG3 and Kaepernick are both. Yeah, I, I uh, figured, like, I mean, I, I think figured, if they sign, well, I mean, yeah, they'll probably pick up to, another one. But yeah, they, they, they run pro style, two right? So. That, the pro style offense, right? Yeah, but they. It's kind of rough to say with Kaepernick because he is a running running quarterback, so they kind of would have to cater to him a That's little what I was bit. Saying. But they have, I mean, the Broncos have a decent offensive line. They still have a whole bunch of wide receivers. They have they 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 match the offer sheet for I, CJ. I think that they, they won't pick up another big name to fill that backup That's role I because yeah. I don't know, like Dirty Sanchez has had enough quarterback. <laughs> you think he's gonna be the starting quarterback? I, I think he's well right now. He is the starting because I don't think there's nobody else there. Yeah, I mean, right, right now, as but of right you now, think? He, I, 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 I think so. that I, I think that they're yeah. um, they opening day. Go, no, if it, they pick up Kaepernick yeah. or RG three, then you have a quarterback controversy. Yeah. I think it's going to be will, Fitzpatrick. Honestly, yeah. well, I think it, Fitzpatrick would be the best he, for them. Yeah, but you you would have to I pay the too. money for him. Yeah, he, he, he wants a lot money. of money. That's why the deal hasn't got done with the Jets yet because they're not trying to pay him. They're trying to keep as many pieces as possible, exactly. already losing pieces left and, and right. So. And and he had a great and year, rough. but the money he's asking he, for is... Yeah. Oh. And that's the thing. See, that's, and, and, and I understand it. Like, even though I, I don't feel like every player that asks for more money deserves it, right. but I do understand that at the end of the day, this is a business, and when these teams are done with you, they will toss yeah. you to the side, yeah. they will throw yeah. you away, they will cut you, and you'll be holding the short end of the stick no matter what you did for that organization. So I do understand trying yeah. to get your money now, and he's coming off probably one of his best seasons of his career, of his career playing right. with the Jets. So I do understand it from that standpoint. Will he get that the check that he wants? I don't know, but... Once Brock Osweiler got a check like that, then. But you know he's a lot oh, younger man. too. Yeah, but I mean he didn't Even really show too much. Even though I don't think he, listen, I don't think he deserved all that that much money that he, he got. He got a big check. He, he did <laughs> seventy two million dollars. How much guarantee money? What I'm I'm not sure. They how didn't much say the guarantee. guarantee. I'm sure it probably was at least thirty million. Had to be guaranteed. That wow. I mean, right. How many games he started? 18, seven. Eighteen. Did he? Was it even seven? How many games he started? Like about yes. five, six. I, I, well, no, he he started like nine, I think. He got and the Matt Castle that, treatment. That, 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 <laughs> I mean, he might have had. He had yeah, but look had, at the like, offense. Four, he's got yeah. a great offensive line. He's got you know great elite receivers. Right. And so and that's the that's the thing. You going from maybe having one of the best receiving corps. In football, to now yeah. you go to a place where you don't it's have very, that very luxury. Very, very Yeah. You don't also you don't have the luxury of having, you know. Honestly, I might even say the Broncos were the best defense in the league. Oh, you, could, you, you could argue that. I mean, I, I love the Patriots. <laughs> they, they showed it in, in, in the Super Bowl. I mean, that, that's, that's you have the benefit well of having known. the best defense in the league, and then all of these threats at wide receiver. I know C.J. Anderson didn't have a good year last season. It was decent. But, but you know, he, he's still he's still decent. Punch in yeah, exactly. It was decent. Not. So you, you you don't have any of that. So to give somebody now when you don't know what he can do when he doesn't have that that comfort zone, right? You're gonna give him that much money. I think that was a mistake for them to do it. But Hey, 
I applaud Brock you Osweiler gotta get your, for getting get that your check. check cause I get your check. Know I'm all about getting the check. And since he got that check, I'm happy for him. Because, like I said, when they done with you, when they don't want man. you, when they don't need you, NFL, it's man. over. They will cut you, and that's it. And nobody is, is sticking around. Nobody. That's the nothing, NFL. Exactly. There's nothing you can do. That's the NFL. So. And you talked about uh, taking care of your family as the priority for some of the players. We got a fan mail question. Uh, Christian from Chicago writes, what do you guys think about the White Sox, Adam LaRoche, uh, oh, retiring after being told he would be That's have to crazy. limit the, the time his son spends in the dugout by the team? So uh, his son crazy. regularly in the dugout, and you know they don't, you know the White Sox organization didn't want that, so he's he, he chose between you know, spending time with his son and playing baseball, and the, uh, there wasn't too much of a hard decision for him because he retired. And um, yeah. he's going to spend time with his I son. Think, I mean, if, if he, if he, you know, his son was already in the dugout, I feel like if he's if he's well-behaved, if he's not causing an issue, then I don't mind it. If I'm a GM or an owner, then I don't mind it if that's what he's been doing. Right. If he's playing well, we don't have any issues, you know, outside of baseball or on the field, we don't have any issues with him. I mean, they, they gave him, they were giving him $13 million, so obviously they respect him and what he exactly. does. So, you know, I can understand from his standpoint, you know, listen, family over everything, like Fab said, you know, so I can understand him saying, he, and I'm sure he, he's probably well off. He doesn't seem like one of the guys who just buys everything and, and throws all his money away. So I'm sure he's he's good. And he's 36. I mean, he might have had another two, two, three years. And he probably, he said, you know what? Yeah. My family is more important. Spending that time having my son with me is more important to me than this $13 million. Dollars, so I'm good. I can take that. I can. I'm, I'm happy with my career, and right. I can retire. And I and I and, and I'm and I'm okay with that. You know, and I and I like that. You know, and then on the other side of that, I do understand. You know, the white side maybe from a business standpoint, they don't want want the kid in the in the dugout. I maybe don't. They don't want it to start catching the other players, mm -hmm. start doing it, and then we have a whole daycare going on <laughs> in, in the dugout. So maybe I can understand that. Um, and but I what I do like is you know I was I was reading that the that the players were thinking about right. actually boycotting right. when they found out they that, that you know this was going down. So I, I do I, I you know I, I love the Chicago White Sox players for that I'm having standing up for back them. because that's right. what it's all about when you when you have a team that that kind of camaraderie. Um, check out you know you guys at home um, our, our newest uh, blog writer Eric Sanchez he just uh, recently wrote a blog when that should be up. Yeah, it's up now on the website. So check it out. It's, it, right, right. In, you know, going along with this story here. So make sure you guys check that out on the uh, website, realfansrealtalk.com. He also he put up a couple of blogs this past week. Uh, not only the, that, the, the Adam LaRoche blog, but he also has one on Kawhi Leonard and one on your, your Nickelbackers and what they <laughs> should do as far as their, their, their coaching uh, God situation. bless. God bless so the Knicks. Make sure you take, you guys check that out, realfansrealtalk.com. Also, on uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter and on Instagram at realfantalk, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. And if you do want to send in fan mail questions, first of all, shout out to all the fans that are writing in the question to us. It's fan mail at realfansrealtalk.com. So make right, sure right. you guys are following us on all of the social media. Oh, and youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. You can catch all of the archive uh, episodes Cortez, Bino, uh, Respect Life Cast. Uh, Anthony Mason, Deontay Wilder, everybody is on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. And all the links are on our website for social media and YouTube, realfansrealtalk.com. Just go to blogs and put Eric, pick, uh, Eric Sanchez for his recent blogs. They're also on the bottom of the realfansrealtalk.com website. I agree with you, and you pretty much covered all the bases with that, you know, both sides of the coin there. Like, you respect him for putting family right. first, but at the same time understanding the business aspect that, you know, they don't want, you know, uh, if he brings his kid, can I bring my kid? Exactly. And then the dugout is kind of overcrowded, like you said, day case center. And plus it's baseball. Guys curse, they use, use foul weird. language. Yeah. It's like, kind of like when you have Which a guy's... Like when, 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 <laughs> when you have a guy's night out and stuff, it's kind of like you want to be free to say whatever Certain you want to say. Right, right. And if there's children present, you can't really do that. Yeah. So... 
you know, and I'm, you know, all about family first, so I do respect him for right, doing right. that. I, but me, you, you gotta, you gotta kind of understand both sides of it, I guess. So I didn't really want to talk about it, but I mean, I have a son, so I respect his decision. Like, I understand him one wanting, wanting to have his child around him as he's showing and being a, a master at his craft. I, 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 I respect that in his decision to retire, I respect that as well. I kind of understand where the, the White Sox are coming from. Are, are they winning? How, what's going on? What's the, the nature of, because I, yeah, I, I watch they're baseball, they're but I'm not too sure. Yeah, so I mean, yes. they're losing one of their better players, so, yeah. I mean, if the Yankees, I don't think the <laughs> like, Yankees will that, allow That's what I'm saying, can you compare I, I, I a situation? Think, I don't like, think the Yankees will allow that in their in their dugout, but you know he's the player that might you know, yeah, other, teams, know. other teams might want to consider. Right. Yeah, but yeah, you know, but he's, he's under contract obligations with them, so right. it's yeah. not like he could really go to another team. Uh, you know, if they if if that was the case. I remember but. growing up watching baseball and you know seeing some of the kids. You know, they're, they're not really a contender right now, the White Sox. So maybe that was the reason, the big too. reason why. No, I mean, even if they are, I, I mean, it's, it's if he was with another franchise, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't they be okay they with stopped it. it. Yeah. Like, you know. I, mean, I, guess... I mean, you have players, kids who who are like the Bat Boys. Yeah, I've seen like that before. That. Yeah, and, I've seen yeah, that you know, before. But, yeah. And you know, be, being with your kids is a good thing. Look at Steph Curry with his, you know, oh, yeah, two daughter bringing at the her, press bringing through. Yeah, Chris Paul stuff. does it with his son. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they're not, they're not, you know, sitting there on the bench with yeah. their mind. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, the dugout. Well, it's a little, it's a he's in it. So he was in it. He's in a dugout like, every game with them, or he's just in the clubhouse. No, no, in the dugout. He was, he was actually what. in the dugout. Yeah. Hold on, they're chewing tobacco and... He probably might be chewing tobacco. Well, <laughs> the kid isn't, but he's like, the players. And the kid is right yeah. there, just, yeah. wow. So, yeah, it's I have a, I, so I have a different you know, aspect yeah. of it now. I so. understand him retiring, but you understand the business aspect from the White Sox Exactly, exactly. Like, now I see you know. it. If it was just a clubhouse, maybe, but the dugout, nah, the kid yeah. can't be in a dugout. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, I mean, he's, he's, that's the only thing is, like, he's been there, so, I mean... And the only re thing I could really think of is maybe something happened where he might have caused the issue or something. Right, right, right. That's the only thing I could really think of because if you already had him there, it had to be why an incident now or all something. Of a sudden, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Right, right. So, but I'm like I said, I'm not 100. percent But that's the only thing that I can really think of as to why you know it's not he right. can change the rules on him now. Um, but we do have another another video. We are gonna run this trailer. Myself and the Statman and the crew actually we, we've been invited to the theaters. They they want us to come <laughs> out to the theaters. Uh, 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 Jay Every Day, Jermaine Smith, uh, who actually so, so. You know, gave myself and the Statman our start on radio. He's done a movie, A Piece of Me, um, and actually starred uh, Dev Dev uh, Ellis, who came on a couple of weeks ago on on the program. The uh, Tim Nato. From the uh, that uh, Tostito Super Bowl commercial, who also played in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, he's playing in the league. He's, yeah, yeah he's, he's starring in, in the movie as well. Um, and uh, the trailer is, is here, so we are going to run the trailer for you guys. When we can't recover from the pain in our childhood, we tend to carry that hurt within us. Bryce, why did I get a call from your teacher today? You don't know. Well, maybe you can explain to me why are you running around the damn cafeteria, throwing food, acting a fool with them other kids? And I told your mother, I should have gave you away when you was a damn little baby. Why, Daddy? Because I knew you was going to be a little knucklehead. We are more prone to hurting the ones closest to us. Just as stubborn as your father. Works. Don't go there. Don't go there. Get in the car! Get in the car! The ones who never hurt us in the first place. It's a good woman right here. Facts. Right like where? Yo, what's your problem? Hold up. You need to back up, baby boy. Ain't no more baby boy. My name is Joseph, all right? Hi. Joseph, don't right. put your... No, 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 that's cool. No, it's right. It's all right. Nah. I'm tired of people telling me that forgiveness is for you and not the other person. Daddy did a lot of stuff for this family. He messed his family up and I'm over it. I want to know how he is so I can go home. You know daddy was in a lot of pain back then. Come on, Darlene! Y'all gonna sit there and act like y'all ain't seen him beat up on mom? He used to try to smack the brightness out her eyes. Bryce, we were kids. And what we were we supposed to do? And we all stood around helpless. Look. He used to try to smack the brightness out her eyes. Look, I mean, shoot, we all was there, but how long are you gonna hold on to this house? Yeah, there? forever. Forever. And possibly till and after he's dead and gone. I, I'm gonna leave you. Bro, look. 
don't. Mommy taught us to pray for one another. Yeah. You always we prayed pray. for mommy. You always pray. We're gonna pray for daddy and brother. I'm gonna pray for you. When are we gonna start telling the other person to start caring? Live here, Real Fans, Real Talk. Mark the Statman, Skevich, Trip Young, and uh, the creator of the the Grateful brand, Good Money by Todd, Ty, Ty Mel McCoy. Up, um, about that time for the final thought segment of the program, and we'll start with our guest. Uh, what would you like to say out there to the fans? I just, I'm just so happy to be here. Grateful? <clears throat> Grateful beyond beyond measures. Um, I appreciate you guys for having me again. Um, shout out to everybody that's supporting me now. Then, future. Um, today, I just came from seeing one of my good friends for the last time. Rest in peace, Marlon. I love you. See you when I get there and tell all the homies up there that, that I miss them. And just... Grateful opportunities open doors. Grateful opportunities open doors. Check me out. All right. Sure. I'm just going to say, man, I'm going to piggyback off of that. Grateful for life right now. And um, definitely rest in peace, Marlon. We're going to actually dedicate this this show to you. Rest in peace, brother. Rest in peace, bro. Um, and make sure you guys keep tuning in. Next week we got uh we got Graf coming on in our H two O and then the following week we got the cast of uh, a piece of me the movie coming through. All right, and we're I'm grateful uh, for the fans and having the show, and we hope you guys continue to support us. Make sure you vote for us on the Be Free Awards. It's on Most my uh, Instagram profile, Statman on the score Skevich, the direct link. It's gonna be all over our social media. Just click on the link. It's the best of 2015 episode. Make sure you click the like button on that, and you'll be able to vote for us to win the Be Free, free uh, People's Choice Award. They so, got to get this award, y'all. Vote. They thank, have to. That's thank, right. thank you guys once again for joining <laughs> nice us. Nice show. So for we'll be Ty, grateful Ty, when, when y'all vote us in. Exactly. <laughs> Most definitely. For, for uh, Tymel McCoy and Trip Young, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us on this edition of Real Fans, Real Talk, and we'll see you next week, everyone. Good money. Grateful. This was coming with the now or never. That was perfect. Yeah, <laughs> vote for us now or never, but I can't say never because if you want to vote later, as long as you vote, I'm okay Yeah, exactly. With it. Just, okay, vote now and vote for everybody else never. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. Real fans, real talk .com, got it They got the hottest bloggers Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor Tell them about from spring to winter, tuning in should be the only...